Hello YouTube chess lovers and my friends this is Gunjan here welcome to the 46th episode of my dirty chess tricks in this episode i am going to show you one of the carlson's amazing trick against sicilian nasdorf from the white perspective the opening arises after the following model e4 c5 knight to f3 d6 d4 c captures d4 knight captures d4 knight to f6 knight to c3 and now the characteristic Nasdorf move a6 with stop any intrusion on the b5 and later on black himself look out for the move b5. Here white has tried many options but in the January 2017 Carlson come up with this amazing tricky line which start with a3 very constructive waiting move. Now if you check this position in online database you will find out that the highest played move in this position is e5 and which looks very natural. Many modern Nashdorf theory recommend the move e5 where black get a superior version of the Sveshnikov as the knight cannot go to the b5 square. Here white has tried the move either knight to b3 and knight to f3 but Carlson has some another idea namely knight to f5. Well all the theory books has dismissed this move because here if black wish he can straight away get a slight advantage position immediately with the move d5 and after all this is the break black wants to achieve in almost all the Sicilians. Now before we continue with the main line starting with d5 I should briefly note that black has tried other options but they are not working very well. For example if black continue here with the move g6 then I think this is already an inaccuracy as white can simply play knight to e3 and this knight has been fast rooted to the d5 square and combined with bishop to g5 white has obtained a very good advantage. Many players who don't know the theory has tried the move bishop captures f5 which looks more natural in this position but after the move e captures f5 not only white obtained the bishop pair but white has a very easy plan of campaign what he wants to do is he wants to play bishop to g5 and then knight to d5 with a very comfortable and easy position. Not to mention if black continue with bishop to e7 then there is always a plan of g4 g5 rip apart the black king side. Now to illustrate my point I like to show you my game against a lower rated where my opponent continues with the obvious move d5 grabbing every single space on the center of the board. But as I mentioned earlier the plan of campaign is very easy for the white. Yup, you start with bishop to g5, pin down the knight, threatening the move, knight captures d5. So the obvious response is d4, counter attacking the knight. But after bishop captures f6, black has to capture with the queen as g captures f6 will ruin down the pawn structure and it's not clear where the black king will go. So queen f6 is forced. Afterwards, we are going to continue with knight to d5, attacking two spots. So once again, black response is almost forced. He has to play queen to d8. And the forcing sequence continue from here onwards. Queen to f3, threatening the move, f6. Black has to stop it. So the knight to d7 looks the obvious response. But imagine the surprise. Yup, we are going to play the move f6 anyways. If knight to f6 then we can capture the knight and then capture on b7. So the force response is g captures f6. But this is a dynamic pawn sacrifice as white is going to continue with bishop to d3. And you can see already this light squares are big problematic things for the black camp. For example in the game black routinely churn out his moves such as bishop to g7 planning to castle on the king side. 
I continue with B4. So in near future, I'm looking for the move A4 and B5. And the same time also stopping knight to c5 idea by black. And amazingly enough, my opponent castle at this point. And then he get this ultimate shock, queen to f5. Afterwards, in few moves, black has to resign. So accordingly, the best move for the black is d5. And surprisingly enough, if you put this position in any engine, it will give black a slight advantage. Okay, no matter, white should continue with bishop to g5. The same old story, we are pressurizing the d5 square. So black has to push forward with d4. Afterwards, bishop captures f6, queen captures f6, knight to d5 and queen to d8. Pretty much same sequence as we seen earlier. Here, white has to be careful as black is already threatening the move bishop captures f5 and then queen captures d5. So accordingly, in the older games, white has tried the various options including knight to g3. But in the January 2017, Carlson come up with this great novelty, queen to g4. So this move has a great merit that it not only support this knight but right now white is also threatening the move knight captures g7 check something black has to respond immediately. If black continue here with rook to g8 then his king is going to stuck in the center so that's not good. In the game actually Carlson's opponent avoid the whole trick with bishop captures f5 which is one way to play against this line but after the simple move queen captures f5 a knight to c6 and h4 Carlson demonstrate that this is a fun way to play as a wide as white has a lot of attacking chances where black has literally struggled for the counter play throughout the game I have attached the whole game in the PGN which later on you can check out how Carlson managed to win that game. Anyways, our trick lies on the obvious move. What happens when black continue with the move g6, which looks absolutely natural in this position, preserving the bishop pair and asking the knight, hey, what are you doing on the f5 square? Well, here is the answer. White has prepared this lethal reply, queen to g3. Black has to already know what he is going to do next, otherwise the game will be finished very quickly. In the professional tournament, if you find out that your opponent is playing the Nostrop Sicilian, then this trick is definitely worth to try it. Here Black has the only option that is knight to c6. But first, let's look at what happened if he tried other moves. For example, if he continue with g captures f5, then the simplest is we can give this check and at the end, white will emerge with an extra exchange and a winning position. So that's not a great choice for the black. Well, what happens if black defend the pawn with bishop to d6? Now threatening g captures f5. Well, the answer is very simple. We are going to take this bishop and after queen takes, white has this winning blow. Boom! <laughs> so this knight is attacking two pieces and if black foolish enough to capture this knight, then after queen captures e5, we again nab the rook in the corner and in fact the game. Okay then, let's check out what white is going to do after knight to c6, which in fact happened in few games after Carlson game, where white demonstrate the sting in the tail, the amazing resource, knight captures d4, bam, what a move. 
Once again, black has the only response that is e captures d4. If black continue with other moves such as bishop to g7, then white can calmly retrieve his knight back to f3 and he is a healthy pawn up. And instead of bishop g7, if black try to capture with the knight, which is in fact a blunder as after queen captures e5, attacking three spots, bishop to e6, and now instead of grabbing the rook in the corner, the line which I'm going to propose goes as follows, knight to f6 check, king to e7, knight to d5 check, king to e8, and now you capture this knight with healthy two pawn advantage. So finally, let's check out what happens if black capture with the e pawn. Well, I think you already see that now the c7 square has been supported by the queen and white knight can simply slide into juicy c7 square with knight to c7 check and after king to d7 and knight captures e8 we have a unique scenario where right now white is an exchange and a pawn for a bishop and on top black king has been misplaced but black can also argue that white knight is also strangled in the corner and if black can manage to trap that knight then still the game can be continued. Here if queen to a5 then king to d1 is a very strong reply. So accordingly the best response goes as follows b5 trying to play bishop to b7 and nab the knight as quickly as possible. And against this and almost all other responses white has this sneaky move queen to b3 looking at two potential checks and surprisingly enough black cannot defend both of them. For example if black continue with bishop to b7 then we can deliver this check and after bishop to d6 and the move e5 black position is completely busted. He cannot take with the knight as the b7 bishop will hang and if he continue with queen to e7 Pinning down the e pawn, then white has a very simple continuation. Queen captures, queen captures, pawn captures, and after rook to e8 check, king to d2, and rook captures e8. After the whole transaction, white emerge with an extra exchange. So here it is very obvious that black king has to go to the e7 square to come out from all the checks and now black is all set to capture that knight. So white has to provide some forcing moves and he does with queen to d5. Attacking two spots. So black response is almost forced. He has to play bishop to d7. All set to grab the knight in the corner. But surprisingly enough, white has one amazing resource which can literally save the night. Before I move on, i like you to pause this video and find a decisive move by white which can actually tactically save the night. Okay, are you ready? Did you find the winning move by white? Yup, it's a4. Well, this move tactically saved the knight as if black foolishly take this knight, then after a captures b5, white has created two pins and by force he will get his exchange back. So now black has the only sequence which keep him alive in the game and I am very much doubtful if your opponent see this position first time he can hardly find out. Anyways, we need to see what happens even if he find out over the board. The sequence start with queen to a5 check, king to d1, and now the star move, bishop to h6, threatening checkmate on d2 as well as grabbing the knight on a8. Looks so threatening, right? But white has an equally good move in this position namely 
queen to c5 check king to f6 and now b4 black has two choices amongst them if queen captures b4 then this is the easiest one as after queen captures b4 knight captures b4 and the move knight to b6 white obtain a healthy exchange and against the most critical response knight captures b4 which looks very obvious in this position white can create following sequence which give him the winning advantage first of all queen captures d4 check king to e7 now queen to c5 check and it doesn't matter wherever the king goes let's say in one game a black king continues with king to d8 afterwards white has a very simple reply namely queen to c3 pinning down the knight and attacking the rook in the corner and after rook to e8 which actually happened in the game white deliver this nasty blow a captures b5 and black queen does not belong to this world that's it guys i hope you enjoy and learn this wonderful carlson trick against e5 nashdorf remember at this critical position play the move queen to g4 and after the obvious move g6 shock your opponent with queen to g3 and get some great attacking fast victory well thank you for watching this video feel free to like subscribe and comment i'll meet you in my next episode very soon bye and take care